Hey everybody. We are like pulling the curtains back on some production stuff and I've invited Dave Madden who's producing and arranging strings for the new songs um, to have a little interview today. Yeah, so glad to be here. So we are finishing our final mixes today and um, I wanted to just, um, you know, check in with you. Maybe people don't know about how long we've been hanging out or what, what all your special secret uh, superpowers are, but just, do you want to talk a little bit about how, well, how, how do we know each other, Dave? <laughs> I play in Wendy's band, Wendy sings in my band, I've played on Wendy's recordings, she sings on my recordings, and now I've gotten to produce, really, um, these two beautiful songs, and uh, it's been a real joy. Yeah, so we've known each other since, I think, like, 2005. Yeah, sounds and right. we've pretty much worked together in every capacity, except for this one. So this is so exciting for me to start this project with Dave because we're just longtime collaborators. And he did some string arrangements for um, Louisiana. Louisiana, right. Yeah, right. and for some live shows um, mm -hmm. that we've done. So when we have the show in September, um, we're gonna dust off some of those arrangements as well. So it won't just be these two new songs, which is kind of fun. Yeah, something old, something new. Mm -hmm. Well, so tell me about the evolution of and like, why why were you drawn to arranging? I mean, I know you're a prolific player and a writer and a composer, but like the arrangement part. Yeah, arranging is this um, really beautiful, I almost think of it like a puzzle that you're putting together. You're kind of constructing like an architect's blueprints in a very specific way for what each instrumentalist or vocalist is going to play and lay down onto tape eventually onto a recording at, or at a, at a live performance. So for a string quartet, which of course is like an ancient and time-tested, very specific permutation of musicians. It's violin one, violin two, so there's two violins, and then the lower version of a violin, the viola, which is for the music people out there, it's voiced one fifth lower and then even lower than that is the cello, of course. So you've got two violins, a viola, and a cello. And what that does is it gives you an opportunity for four um, voices, we call them, even though they're not a human voice, we speak of them as being their own voice. So you're kind of weaving this beautiful tapestry of individual melodies that come together and provide this rich harmonic environment to hopefully amplify the meaning of the song, bring out the emotional qualities of a song, and support what the song is trying to convey, you know, Wendy's songs and what it's trying to say. Yeah, that's, that was my next question, was like, what, what parts, what elements of the song do you consider whenever you're composing, like, what are the, what are the pieces of the song that, you know, you, uh, you already have like this blueprint and then you have to compose something that doesn't step on, but also accents and supports, like what, what is the, what are the key elements for you? I think some people would be surprised to know that for many composers or orchestrators or arrangers, like the last thing that you do is write the little black dots. Um, that is the last thing. A lot of it is like philosophy and communication. Um, and by, by philosophy, I mean, asking questions of the art. You know, okay. that's when you sit down, I'm gonna to talk to you, I'm gonna to talk to myself and my experience about what are we doing here? Yeah. You know, and we're gonna- Where are we going? We're gonna do a lot of work and we're gonna go through a lot of things and at the end, what is the, the thing that we want to have accomplished when all that's over? That's so important to go through that process to kind of clarify that for myself as a composer because it keeps you on path of the thing that we're all trying to create this specific type of beauty so for these songs um, we knew that we wanted the strings to play a fairly relevant role they weren't meant to be simplistic uh, what we would call pads just kind of uh, wallpaper music you know music that's there but you don't really notice it it's just in the background somewhere texture. we want uh, just just yeah. a texture we wanted this thing to have some some movement, some motion to um, to go places and do things and to kind of have these moments where it pops out, grabs the listener's attention. Yeah, so um, in, uh, so we just did two songs. One is like a um, sort of love, bittersweet love song and, and it's got sort of like a, a soft, folky train beat style. Like, 
and um, this precious love. This precious love is the name of the song. And mm -hmm. so, like, what what did you feel like that one called for? I think because it's such an achingly beautiful ballad esque song, that strings are particularly adept at nurturing that thing. Right? I mean, when somebody <laughs> talks about a a violin, you know, let me play the tiniest violin in the world for you. It's because <laughs> They're they're getting at the sadness that it can evoke and the depth of emotion and meaning. Yeah. So in that respect, it's kind of right in the wheelhouse of a string quartet. Like there, it's inherently emotional, beautiful texture. I feel know, like strings with bittersweet songs like just go like. Right. Like, could you do this song with any other instrumentation? Like, absolutely. But you would be reaching if it were like with a brass choir. <laughs> yeah, sure. You can you can do that. But you're going to have to really coax that emotional depth out of mm -hmm. brass instruments because their wheelhouse is like exultation and joy and stuff. Like that's what they just, party. they get out of bed and they party I'm and be party. joyous. Well, strings get out of bed in the morning and they just roll into this emotional um, impact zone. So for this one, I think it was, that's what we're going to do. We're going to make it beautiful and there are just infinity ways on how to do that. Sure. You listen to people better than you, just like anything else in the world, you know? If you don't know how to fix your sink, you watch a video on YouTube, and for something like this, we listen to what we would call reference tracks. Mm -hmm. What have great people done with string arrangements on songs that are not entirely dissimilar to this precious love? Right. Yeah, that was fun. I, I really like the way Gregory Allen Isakoff um, uh, works with strings inside the context of these like very intimate songs and so we worked with that but I, I think Dave brought some really fresh uh, some really fresh uh, melodic arcs to this one that are like good surprises you hear it and in the bridge especially it's like just like just this you feel like you've um, you've just gotten on a magic carpet and you're in the clouds or something yeah. like it's this beautiful experience where you're kind of levitating with with the string parts so um, what about Make Your Way? It's a very different song. It's got sort of like a classic R&B style to it. It's also treated in sort of this dreamy, sort of, we were going for a dreamy, uh, dreamy folk experience meeting in this classic R&B style. And I was like, okay, Dave, what are you going to do here? So tell us about what inspired you with this particular shot. I think you start with the lyrics, or I try to start with the lyrics being one of the, the important touchstones. The lyrics for Make Your Way are somewhat bittersweet, you would say. Definitely. So I think that's like, just take that core, that nugget of, okay, well, I want them to do things that would evoke a bitter sweetness to them. Right at the top of the tune, the string's first entrance is this like ghostly, um, dissonant, uh, we, what we would call glissandos. So glissando means to slide, to gliss or to slide. So the notes aren't changing cleanly, they're going. Uh, that gives it this kind of ghostly quality to inform or even kind of warn, or foreshadow for the for the listener. Um, nice. Hey, like things are going to happen <laughs> here that are going to be a little ugly, a little unexpected, a little crunchy. It might feel strange, like before the first word is even uttered in the song they've gone on a very short little strange trip, a weird little trip where they go, huh? You know, so if you listen to the top of that song and many people may find, I don't know how you would describe it, but some people might describe it as wrong or ugly or something. It's like, that's kind of what we're going for there. Not for the whole song, but no, okay. yeah. uh, that, that, well, there's a few moments where you use techniques like that in that song, which are like perfect moments. That, that particular song is bittersweet. I mean, anybody watching, someone they care about go on a new path that is uncertain is uncertain, going to yeah. give you both feelings of I don't know I feel like in the body hope fear excitement <laughs> anxiety uh -huh. because excitement and anxiety are the same part of the body it's literally like the same neurotransmitter so mm -hmm. it's the same physical sensation as that glissy dissonant a little bit not quite dissonant but just so a little tension in there but it's a song all about but the groove is so smooth you had to introduce it i love the way you introduced that it's mm -hmm. really cool and there's a, a few other moments like that just move right along with the narrative we that. explored a lot of different musical 
nuance and and uh, string techniques in this song. From the very beginning, there's what's called tremolo, which is when the string players kind of vibrate the bow back and forth very, very quickly on the string. Um, kind of gives it this da -da 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 kind of a sound. Uh, later in the second verse of this song, there's this whole pizzicato feature, um, P-I-Z-Z, -Z, like, pizzicato, okay. which means to pluck um, in, the, in the Italian. The Italian's got to name everything. So, but there's this whole plucking thing, and with all the reverb uh, on the tune, it also gives it this like cavernous, mm. hollow, airy, glassy mm. quality uh, to it. And it's just something different too. You know, it's something that it speaks to the lyrics, but also provides some ear candy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely texture because we have an electric guitar, a bass, mm -hmm. a Wurlitzer. It's, it's a very typical R&B track in, in, in every other way. And yeah. Classic R&B, you know, uses, they use strings so perfectly, like, um, you know, just uh, um, Al Green and Marvin, Marvin Gaye, Gay, Otis Redding, um, and uh, Bill Withers. Bill Withers. Just, oh, I know, Sunshine, and there's so many beautiful references in that world. Um, mm -hmm. and, I, and we wanted to just nod to that, but also, you know, play with, you know, the tone. Of, and I, I love what you did with both songs. I'm just so happy. Thank you. So, yeah. what's next for you, Dave? Like, what, what? What would you like the next chapter to look like in your world of creativity and production and arranging and growth as an artist yourself? More projects like this, probably. Projects like this scratch a lot of different itches for me. I get to be involved in the planning and execution. I get to play, I mean, my primary instrument is piano or keyboards, and I'm, I'm doing some of that on these tunes as well. I love getting to be in the studio. We're planning live performances mm -hmm. of this with the string quartet, which is going to be really special. Really special. So um, that's my honest answer is I love getting to do projects that demand various and interesting things. He also plays the bass and the electric guitar on both of these tracks. Yeah. So <laughs> piano is where he's, he's pretty much the utility guy and string ranger. So and and production ears and and, uh, and and it's been a total joy to do this with you. I, I just look forward yeah. to more. I mean, it's always a joy to work with you, like, for all these years. And then just to watch you grow. I mean, to also, like, we did um, Louisiana and the string parts for that in 2010. And I think just watching you build these pieces for churches and build these really elaborate arrangements for other organizations and your own band, like, it's just been so beautiful to watch you grow as an artist, as an arranger, as, a, you know, putting that puzzle together. So you say it's, like, magical. So Dave Madden, follow him. Watch what he does, it's awesome. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Yeah. Mwah.